What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here and today we are breaking down all the assault rifles in chapter 4 season 3 of Fortnite and I'm about to show you some assault rifle tricks that you've never heard before. You're about to step up your assault rifle gameplay big time. Now to start off I just want to say that rarity of the current assault rifles matters more than it ever did in the past. This is because every assault rifle right now is fast firing and has much better recoil at the higher rarities, allowing you to shoot faster with less recoil kick and bloom. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you all the TTKs for each gun at different rarities and different distances so we can compare them well. Now when it comes to recoil, I have a secret trick for you, and I'm honestly a little hesitant to share it because it works so well and no one is talking about it. With all assault rifles in Fortnite, they have a maximum vertical recoil limit, meaning that the recoil of the gun will reach a certain height and then stop moving upward anymore. So if you're having a hard time controlling recoil, especially at long ranges, the trick is to begin firing at their feet and let the gun naturally climb up to their chest or their head. That way you can just lay down on the trigger and never have to fight the recoil. It just climbs to their chest and stays there for the rest of the magazine. And then you just have to aim left or right. It's extremely effective at medium to medium long ranges and even long ranges with high rarity MK assault rifles. Now, the lower rarity of the gun, the lower you'll have to aim at their body. For instance, with a gray version of the MK assault rifle, you have to aim at their feet from far away, but with the mythic version, you only have to aim at their groin. Ouchies. If you're really far away, you'll need to aim pretty far below their actual character model, but once it kicks up to their body, it's locked in. I've had a lot of people in my comments and my live streams asking how to control recoil, and this is honestly the easiest way. The second way to control recoil at long range is to just tap fire these fast firing weapons one bullet at a time. This controls the recoil much better and keeps the gun from climbing so much. You'll still have to fight it a bit by pulling down on your aim, but it's much easier to control than firing fast or full auto. You can also combine both of these methods for the most effective recoil control. So just aim toward your enemy's groin and tap the trigger, and in most cases, it's going to provide the most consistent recoil. But oftentimes you'll find that aiming really low and going full auto is actually a much more effective way to use the weapon at medium to medium long range. Boom! What I just gave you right there is going to make most of you 47% more effective with any assault rifle. But we're not done yet. Now, in exchange for turning you into an elimination machine and massively improving your assault rifle effectiveness, I'd kindly ask you to consider smashing that like button and body slamming the subscribe button. <laughs> I promise to only deliver you outstanding content that you can't get anywhere else. If I fail to deliver on that promise, please unsubscribe. Now let's do this. Okay, let's break down each assault rifle and how to use them most effectively. Just in case you're wondering, the guns I normally carry in my loadout are an MK assault rifle, a Havoc pump shotgun, and a flapjack for cleanup. I'll explain why in a bit. I also want to state that the only rifle that is consistent and very effective past 100 meters is the MK assault rifle. All the other rifles are best used up to about 60 meters away, which is considered medium to medium long range. Okay, let's break down the MK Alpha assault rifle, because it's by far the most consistent and effective weapon in the hands of a good player. The MK assault rifle has nearly no damage fall off at any range, so it can be used in very long range engagements. It has about a 33% headshot multiplier when compared to a body shot. The problem with this weapon at long range is the vertical recoil. As stated before, the trick to countering the recoil is by either starting low on the body and tap firing the weapon, or aiming well below the enemy character and firing full auto. The higher the rarity of this gun, the much better the recoil gets. If you have a gray version of this gun, it's very difficult to use at longer ranges, but the mythic version of this gun has very good recoil, and you can actually burst fire it at long ranges to melt your enemies. While the MK Alpha has very little damage fall off and it's effective at very long ranges, it's really most effective within 100 meters of an enemy and the recoil is easily controlled within 50 meters of an enemy. Once you get past the 100 meter mark, you're going to struggle a little bit to eliminate your enemies in a single clip. Therefore, you should definitely be strategic about your reloads at longer ranges with this gun. If you have an enemy hurt already and they aren't in sight, you should reload the MK to be ready to finish them off in a single clip. I also recommend the reckless reload augment which makes assault rifles reload significantly faster 
dirt on an empty magazine. You always want to keep this weapon as loaded as possible in long range fights because of how often you'll get someone nearly dead and then run out of ammo in the magazine. Next up is my second favorite assault rifle, the Flapjack. The Flapjack rifle is a medium to short range assault rifle. It deals an extra 40% damage per headshot compared to body shots. It doesn't have a scope and suffers from pretty wild recoil when using it at long ranges. But where the Flapjack shines is in close to mid range combat. It has a huge magazine size and very heavy damage per bullet. It also has very impressive hip fire accuracy and in air accuracy. Seriously, this thing with soaring sprints is crazy good. It's the most accurate hip fire assault rifle in Fortnite right now and has hardly any decrease in accuracy when jumping and hip firing at close ranges. The flapjack has really good flexibility between close and medium range and can be used effectively as an SMG. It also has a really fast weapon swap time so it pairs great with a heavy hidden shotgun. I usually carry the flapjack rifle as my cleanup weapon instead of an SMG or pistol because it's just as effective at close range and has a lot more usability at medium range as well as a great magazine size for breaking structures and applying constant pressure. I think this weapon pairs best with a Havoc pump shotgun and a long range assault rifle like the MK, but you could also pair it with a drum shotgun to fill that medium range a little bit better. One strategy for using the flapjack is going for headshots on unsuspecting enemies or on enemies rushing you when you're hurt. The large 40% headshot multiplier can be devastating if you land a few shots in a row and it can turn the tide of a fight. The mythic version of this gun can deal 264 damage with five shots to the head and it can do that very consistently if you're accurate. You can hold the gun at head level while aiming down sights and it's very accurate when tap firing. I always recommend aiming for the chest when using this weapon at close ranges because the recoil will cause the gun to kick up to their head and capture some sweet critical damage. Now I don't recommend using the flapjack at longer range because it has severe damage fall off past 100 meters, going from 28 damage to the body at 50 meters all the way down to 18 damage to the body at 100 meters with a blue rarity gun. The mythic version is much more usable at longer ranges due to the higher damage and improved recoil though, but it's still outclassed by every other AR at very long range. If you do use the flapjack at longer ranges, here are the keys. This weapon has perfect first shot accuracy when standing still and even more reduce bloom when crouched. So while I normally never advocate being an easy target while firing, the flapjack is best used at very long range when you're staying crouched and even better, not moving at all. This is because the spread of the bloom becomes tighter when you're sitting still crouched. The flapjack is most consistent at long ranges when firing a medium burst of about five bullets while aiming toward the feet to allow the recoil to come to their chest. After about five bullets, let the bloom return back to normal and then repeat the medium burst again. But be very careful of getting headshots sniped while you're standing still. This gun is very loud and it has a huge magazine, meaning it gives your enemy plenty of time to hear you and line up a shot while you're distracted firing at someone else. So here's an example of doing my best to hold down the trigger and control recoil. Now here's an example of me doing medium bursts. Notice how much more effective the flapjack is at long range when you have a higher rarity and you aren't just holding down the trigger. So overall, I'd recommend the five burst shot at long ranges and at medium range, definitely go for the full auto feet to chest for the most consistent damage. There's a lot to master with the flapjack, so keep practicing with it in creative death matches. All right, next up is the thermal DMR. This is a projectile weapon, meaning that it has bullet travel time and you have to lead your shots on a moving target. The good things about this weapon is that it has a 40% headshot damage multiplier, a thermal scope, which allows you to spot enemies easier at longer ranges, it has zero damage fall off at any range, and it has augments that greatly increase its effectiveness. The steady hands augment reduces the DMR's recoil and improves accuracy a lot, which is almost a necessity when using this gun effectively. The bloodhound augment marks your enemy and provides wall hacks whenever you hit them with your DMR, which is incredibly useful, especially for team modes. You can also toggle the thermal vision off in the scope if you want to see piles of loot or 
objects in the distance. My wife likes this gun a lot because it seems to have good aim assist on controller and it becomes very useful with the augments. But personally for me on PC, I'd never trade out my MK Alpha for it. This gun makes all my aim training feel worthless because it rarely hits what you're aiming at unless you've got the steady hand augment. All right, more downsides of this weapon. Because it's a projectile weapon, it makes it nearly unusable at very long ranges past 100 meters out against moving targets. It also has horrendous horizontal recoil at lower rarities of the gun, and it makes it extremely inconsistent to shoot fast. So if you're gonna use the DMR, you wanna use it at about mid range while pacing your shots and using good cover. This is because it's not the best at challenging in an open field due to its crazy recoil. It's really good for landing a couple shots and then going back to cover and then repeating that action again. It's also great for landing shots on unsuspecting enemies because of the hefty 40% headshot damage multiplier. The higher rarities of this weapon become much more usable and a mythic version seems to be coming to the game because I've found it in creative mode. The steady hands perk and bloodhound augments are kind of the saving grace for this weapon and I personally wouldn't use it unless you use those perks. All right, last up is the Havoc Suppressed Assault Rifle. The strongest aspects of this weapon is its fairly consistent vertical recoil, fair accuracy when crouched and not moving at longer ranges, and the fact that it conceals your gunshots past 90 meters on visual audio. It also doesn't have too bad of a damage fall off at longer ranges. This weapon has a moderate 33% headshot damage increase compared to body shots. The downsides of this gun are that it has a very slow swap speed and pretty mediocre damage at close and medium range. I pretty much choose the flapjack over this weapon every time because it's better at what it's intended for, medium and close range combat. The Havoc Suppress can't really be used as a cleanup weapon due to the slow swap speed and fairly slow TTK at close range. The flapjack rifle does more damage at medium and close range as well. I've gotta be honest, the only thing this weapon really has going for it is its hip fire accuracy and the fact that it's suppressed and can't be seen or heard on visual audio past 90 meters. Apart from that, it's kind of a worse version of the flapjack rifle. It has no scope and you have to be standing still to get good accuracy with it at long ranges. Although it is slightly more consistent than the flapjack at longer ranges, it does less damage per bullet, so it actually ends up being worse at nearly every range, except for extremely long distances when damage fall off becomes a factor. The hit fire on the Havoc Assault Rifle is actually pretty consistent because it has very little little horizontal recoil. So if you get stuck with this weapon, you can hit fire it while strafing and just control the recoil using the trick I taught you earlier. Aim low on the body and let it climb up to their chest so you don't have to fight it because it's got a pretty harsh vertical climb. Overall, the Havoc Assault Rifle is not a horrible weapon, but I'd take the flapjack over it in pretty much every situation when considering the same rarities. Okay, now we're gonna break down some TTKs for these weapons at different rarities and different ranges. In these tests, I'm just gonna be going for body shot damage so that we can fairly compare the weapons, as headshots are usually going to be pretty rare in most fights. Let's get into the tests. This is a blue MK Alpha at 100 meters out, what I would consider long range. This is a mythic MK Alpha at 100 meters out, long range. This is a blue MK Alpha at 50 meters out, or what I'd consider medium range. This is a mythic MK Alpha at 50 meters out or medium range. This is a blue thermal DMR at 100 meters out long range. This is a mythic thermal DMR at 100 meters out long range. This is a blue thermal DMR at 50 meters out medium range. This is a mythic thermal DMR at 50 meters out, medium range. This is a blue flapjack at 100 meters out or long range. This is a mythic flapjack at 100 meters out, long range. This is a blue flapjack at 50 meters out, medium range. This is a mythic flapjack at 50 meters out, medium range. This is a blue Havoc AR at 100 meters out or long range. This is a mythic Havoc AR at 100 meters out, long range. 
This is a blue Havoc AR at 50 meters out, medium range. This is a Mythic Havoc AR at 50 meters out, medium range. All right, I hope these comparisons and TTK tests give you an idea of what weapons you want to use at certain ranges and rarities. Being able to master the recoil on these weapons and use them at their effective ranges is going to give you a big advantage. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to aim well at longer ranges. And luckily, I have the video for you. Watch my assault rifle aim tips video, which applies to pretty much every long range weapon. It might highlight the red eye assault rifle, but the teachings are just as effective with any rifle in your hands. I have a feeling it's really going to help you out, and I'll leave a clickable link at the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like. It really helps me out. If you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear it. I try to respond to every single comment. And if you want more Fortnite content with awesome value, check out my must watch playlist on my channel page. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a great day. Shinobi out. Use code Toby1Shinobi in the item shop.